Hi everyone, we're so glad you tuned in today. Guess who I have with us today? This is really cool. This is our publisher, this is our editor from our publisher named Carolyn McCready, the amazing Carolyn McCready from Zondervan, Hello. our incredible publisher, which is a subsidiary of HarperCollins. It's like the there Christian corner of Harper Collins. So she's kind of a big deal and it's really <laughs> cool. Know. She's hanging out with the Wolves today. And Hanging's if you know of office. our book, mm -hmm. oh, I should let her talk. But if you know of our book, then um, you can probably echo the sentiment that her helping us bring it to life was really beautiful and really special and so just incredible in so many ways. So um, this is a one cool person. Great so, to meet you. Hello, everyone. And this was one of my favorite books ever to work on. What a story. It was such an amazing, amazing treat. Aww. Working with Jay and Catherine, I was just telling them it was such a journey. I know it was not easy for them. You have to relive some of the hardest points of your life. Right, and, uh, absolutely. And figure out how to organize it and how to put it down so other people can read it and care about it. Mm -hmm. And they did a beautiful job. So, Aww. yeah, I, I I cried. I read the story like six times, and I still cried the last <laughs> time I read it. So, Aww. yeah, what a beautiful book. And it's having an amazing impact on people. So, yeah, it's, that's it's the really best cool. Part. It's, it's so cool to kind of have that space filled in of what happened. Well, here's a book about it kind of moments rather than trying to find some succinct way to share. What happened? Because I've always struggled with that, I think. So it's so cool to have a book. It's a tangible mm -hmm. deal about our story. So. Home. That's the most beautiful thing about publishing is that you get to take that message and multiply it mm -hmm. hundreds of times, thousands of times, yeah, sometimes yeah. millions of times. Yeah, it's really beautiful, exciting. So thank you for doing the work. Oh, thank it's you. Hard. Well, listen, everyone asks us, like, so we want to write a book. How do you do it? What would you tell them? Because it's, it's easy, right? Yeah, so easy. Just write it. It's a few years off of life. Yeah, a few yeah. years off your life. Kind of almost killed me, but you know, <laughs> that's right, whatever. That's all. You know, that's what that's the reality, especially if you're telling your story and it's um, a journey and it's heartfelt and it can be really emotional. Job. It's um, it's also hard to get published. That's true, and that um. There's no easy path, but I would say write. If you have something to say and you care about sharing it with people, then write. Just don't be afraid to do it. Learn to write. Um, I think you learn to write by reading really good books, and you learn to write by being around people who are good writers, and you learn to write by being around people who will critique you well. Sometimes that's just friends, small groups, sometimes writers' conferences. I really recommend that. Um, connecting with editors and that's why writers conferences are good because you can sit down with an editor and they can really help you and sometimes your books um really well written but the idea is not clear or sometimes the idea is great but it's just all over the place there's all kinds of reasons that books are challenging and you need some help so publishing is a very um relational kind of work as you guys saw yeah it was, it was us working together and we had another editor that worked with us tracy well really it's awesome we're here for tracy yes one of our favorites she's amazing and you know that she really got in there too it's like you're in the trenches figuring out what makes this work and when doesn't it work and what does it need and um so that's it's very it's both relational and it's it can be emotional you know it's different if you're writing a what a study of something or five ways to be a great parent but when you're telling your story and it's the story like Catherine and Jay's you know that is a whole different process but yeah so I think publishing you got to do the work which is right and then you find out those pieces around which are getting good connections and finding um, people will help you so, nice totally piece. well I can't help but think as as dramatic as some stories are, I mean, I very much can remember being so inspired as a little girl by Cork mm -hmm. Tin Boom and the hiding yes. place and right. like riveting, crazy, dramatic stories. But also the not so crazy, not so dramatic, not so like, whoa, I didn't have a massive brain, some stroke stories right. can also be these beautiful testaments right. of what God is doing in the seemingly mundane moments exactly. of life. And that to me is a really close spot for a book 
Because that's most people's life. Exactly. Is it the nearly fatal stroke that leaves you handicapped or the concentration camp you survive or this intense experience uh, after this horrible thing happens? However, there's the universality in all our pain. And I love the thought of women and men writing from the the places of life that are seemingly normal and i know you see that like crazy the power all the in, in all exactly so in all our write. stories yeah. yeah carolyn what are you reading right now i'm curious you always reading? have great recommendations oh not long ago i read um when breath becomes air yes. which is one of my favorite so books in the good. last year wow. or so so beautiful another heart-wrenching story but so beautiful about mm -hmm how to live in the midst mm -hmm. of struggle and dying. It's so about a doctor who had cancer and he tells it just magnificently. So yeah, I love great. personal stories, memoir, it's probably my favorite, but really good fiction. I'm always looking for great fiction too. Um, reading a fiction, I do not read mystery usually ever, but there's a series by Louise Penny and she's, mm -hmm. it takes place in this little town in Quebec and it mm -hmm. is amazingly well written. And these characters, you see this beautiful growth. I'm on like the seventh in the series and that is not my normal yeah. genre, but it's one of those like took me by surprise. I thought, oh, um, I'm learning about people and personalities and myself by reading good fiction. So yeah, I believe in really, really great stories of all kinds. So I think memoirists do that beautifully like you guys did and um, novelists. I think those two bring truth to life in, a, in really um, exceptional ways. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and there's so much power in just recording if it's the memoir, but if it's the fiction, if it's the mystery, if it's the whatever, just recording the stuff in your head. And That's right. It may end up looking totally different than how it started, but just getting something out. I guess my number one thought to anybody kind of even wanting to write a book or wanting to have a blog or anything is just start. Just start putting stuff down on the page and... See what might come out, and that seems so basic and obvious, but I think it's half the battle because people are so intimidated to That's right. just do it and let anybody read it. The blank page is the scariest thing for a writer. The blank page or the, yeah. know, the empty screen. The cursor. It's the cursor it's blinking. blinking at you. Exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. It's incredibly intimidating. And that's where you're totally right. You become a good writer by writing. Right. And, and, and reading, I would say. Mm -hmm. I'm a massive believer in mm -hmm. reading good stuff. But I think it's doing the work. That's where you get there. So, And you look at people like, I don't know if... People will be familiar with somebody like Ann Boskamp, but she was a writer who's now sold, you know, some millions of books. And it was being faithful in her life that seemed little and ordinary and as a farmer's wife in Eastern oh. Canada, hmm. doing her own little thing, not in the middle of some you know, big world with an exciting city of like New York, but right. no, she's she was, not in Manhattan. Exactly. Was there, yeah, but Please. she was doing the work, right? You know, it down. I can remember reading and it kind of changed my life. And I think mm. it was earlier on in her blog that she would do the dishes mm -hmm. at night and the reflection of the bubbles in the dishes were so beautiful mm. and all the multicolors and the rainbow and the bubble and the dish. And you're going, okay, like that's cool and crazy and creepy <laughs> and cool. But you're also going, this woman knows what she's talking about. Right, and right. this is not some hype she came up with. Like right. this is years of doing the dishes. Exactly. And recording, doing the dishes, you know. And I just think that was so powerful to me to think like, this is the real deal, people. Like if you can get on board for the beauty of your dishes, dishes. yeah, you, you can just, write about you're, anything. You're changing your brain, really. Well, and it is, um, I think recording helps you see the beauty, helps you see what's really there. Absolutely. And you, often we miss it. We miss life. Mm -hmm. And so that's a beautiful thought Isn't is by writing truth. it down, we experience it again. We bear we witness. It. Absolutely. Yeah, we share it. There's something very powerful about seeing it in black and white. It becomes this, oh, amazing Ebenezer of hope mm -hmm. that, look, God was faithful and he will be again and again and again and it's this black and white reminder so That's exactly thank right. you for helping us remember well thank you for being willing to remember Aww. yeah writing it the way you did and you know jay and catherine did their work um and they 
probably share this, but you know, in different ways, you know, so at times Catherine could not do some of that work. It was, you know, what she remembered in her head, but mm -hmm. Jay was writing, right. you know, <laughs> sisters were writing, parents mm -hmm. were writing, and to have all of those pieces come together and make the book was really a beautiful tapestry too. We, we probably recall. told you this, I don't know who, who knows this, but the majority of the book was written when I'm pregnant. So we'd get up at 5 a.m. and James is still asleep <laughs> and we'd prop up pillows on top of my tummy kind of in front, pop up a laptop and Jen would go to the coffee shop and we'd write early, early mornings because right. we just had quiet time. And it was so special and I'll treasure it my whole life that little baby mm -hmm. John was a big part of that process <laughs> down in the world, yeah, and just the, the cool full circleness of Two babies came to life together, and just that book, while you're birthing a baby. baby. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, two babies in the way. It's <laughs> really pretty special. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to go now, but I had to tell y'all, we're going to eat some of these amazing chocolate truffles that Carolyn brought me from her home in Oregon. Eugene, so, Oregon. Eugene, uh, Oregon Euphoria truffles. Chocolate. Euphoria yeah. Truffle Dark Assortment. Woohoo! So we're, we're going to dive into these. Good <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's in the club. It's pretty simple. <laughs> okay, guys. Pretty good chocolate. Hey guys. Yeah. I can bring you chocolate. That's so true. Um, anyway, thank you for tuning in. Have a very, very special day. Knowing that um, you're an author of your life and whether or not you're right. published, own your story and live it well to the glory of God. Take all these seemingly crazy things that make up your unique world and record them and recognize God's faithfulness to you in the mess of these words that suddenly become your life story because everyone's story has such amazing value and just, oh, it's just, it's really cool to think your grandkids can read your story one day if nobody else does, okay? Everybody write down their lives. It matters. Do that for that, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> you go, girl. We'll see That's you right. soon. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh.